Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Here where we talk about true crime and mystery, we have cases that will make you cry, will make you angry, beat the crap out of someone, but most importantly, this is a channel where we can have a talk about, hopefully, real crimes and real people, but doing nicely. So for today we are taking a look into a case called the most horrible crime of the 1920s. I bring you the abduction and murder of 12-year-old Marion Parker. So let's not drag this any longer. Stay with me until the end. Please subscribe and do all that YouTube shenanigans. I really appreciate it. So let's start. Marion Parker was born on October 11th, 1915. Her parents were Perry and Geraldine Parker. Marion had an older brother named Perry and a twin sister named Marjorie. Parker family lived in Los Angeles and Perry Parker worked at the National Bank of LA. On December 15, 1927, an unknown man walked in the office of the school where Marion and her sister attended. This mystery man asked for the Parker girl, stating her father Perry had had an accident and he was at the hospital and wanted to see his daughter. Given the seriousness of the subject, Marion was dismissed from school and went along with this man she knew nothing about. Later that day, Marjorie arrived home without Marion. Their mother grew worried, so she called schoolmates and friends looking for Marion's whereabouts. The Parkers received a letter from the kidnapper and they received another one. Perry Parker called the authorities and told them his daughter Marion had been kidnapped and the search for Marion began. On December 16th, the Parkers received a ransom note asking for $1,500 in gold certificates and a location to make the exchange. Perry Parker took note of the serial numbers of the bills so the police could track the kidnapper whenever he used the bills, and he went to the location to make the exchange. But the thing is, Perry didn't go alone. The police was following, and that turned out to be a huge mistake. At the location, the kidnapper noticed Perry was being tailed by the police, so the kidnapper fled. The kidnapper was furious, so he sent more letters. He was upset because the abduction had turned into a nationwide sensation and also because the police had followed Perry. Then the mysterious man called Perry and told him to take the ransom to a designated location and without the police. Perry Parker did what he was told. On December 17th, Perry Parker went to meet the kidnapper in central LA. A car pulled up and inside was a man with his face covered and next to him was Marion sitting in the passenger seat. Perry gave the ransom to the man and the man drove away as soon as he got it. And as the man was driving away, he opened the passenger's door and threw Marion out of the car. Perry ran to Marion and soon he realized Marion was dead and had no limbs. Marion was a head with the, her eye suit open with a wire and a torso stuffed with a towel in a man's shirt. The next morning, Marion's arms and legs were found wrapped in newspaper in a park. The authorities started investigating the death of Marion Parker and also started to look for the man who had committed such atrocity. There was also a prize money for it. The getaway car was found and authorities discovered it had been stolen. They processed the car and recovered fingerprints from it. A towel inside Marion's torso had a laundry mark which was traced to the Bellevue Arms Apartments and authorities interviewed several tenants. The fingerprints taken from the getaway car got a match. His name? William Edward Hickman. But who was William Hickman? Hickman had worked previously with Perry Parker at the bank. Perry had actually made a complaint against William Hickman because Hickman had stolen and forged checks. William was arrested, Perry Parker testified against him at trial, Hickman was convicted and sentenced to probation. He moved to Kansas City for six months and then returned to LA. The letter sent to the family also had fingerprints which matched William Hickman. And he also lived in Bellevue Arms Apartment under a different name. William Hickman became the prime suspect of the abduction and murder of Marion Parker, but authorities would have to catch him after he fled. He was now a wanted man. 
The police tracked William Hickman through payments he made using the gold from the ransom. Then on December 22nd, after being recognized from a wanted poster, William Hickman was arrested, but not before a good old car chase. After being arrested, he stated someone else had killed Marion. Then he said he did it because he wanted money to pay his way through college. Then while in jail, William Hickman confessed, but he implicated two men who he blamed for the murder. Hickman told the police he was only responsible for the letters, phone calls, and for participating in the kidnapping. But unfortunately for William Hickman, the men he implicated were in jail at the time. Hickman was taken to LA and after he realized the police knew he was lying about the two men, William Hickman told what happened to Marion Parker but not before he confessed to other killings. While in his apartment, Hickman blindfolded and tied Marion to a chair. She was becoming a little bit restless. He then strangled Marion until she became unconscious. He hanged Marion's body upside down in his bathtub. He sliced her throat to drain all of her blood. He cut off her arms and legs. He disemboweled her. He wrapped the legs and arms in newspaper. He stored a torso in a suitcase. Then he went to see a movie and cried while watching it. William Hickman then put Marion's body back together and made her look like she was alive. He put makeup on and sewed Marion's eyes wide open with a wire. While searching Hickman's apartment, authorities found bloody footprints, burned handwritten drafts of the ransom letters, they found clippings about the kidnapping, witnesses saw Hickman carrying several packages to his car on the 716 and they also saw him cleaning the seats the next day. William Hickman told his lawyers he had killed Marion because he was following orders of a supernatural being named Providence. So I think it's obvious for all of us when the defense tried to prove Hickman was mentally ill and William Hickman pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. But did it work? No. William Hickman was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. While awaiting execution, he wrote letters apologizing the families of his victims. Then on October 19, 1928, William Hickman was hanged. The motive for the crime was allegedly revenge against Perry Parker. And that's the most horrible crime of the 1920s in LA.